special provision for women teachers have been emphasized that all women teachers desirous of being posted with their spouses will be posted as such provided that the latter are working in desert, hilly, tribal or remote rural area. Placement of women teachers will be made keeping in view their domestic obligations. Every effort will be made to provide the facility of crutches to women teachers. They will also be provided convenience of long leave if necessary for bringing up their children, possibility of providing them part time work that should also be explored, uniformity of service conditions should be given and it is desirable that there should be uniformity of service conditions for all teachers of the same category throughout the country. It is essential that posting and transfer of teachers are made in accordance with certain norms. By and large, a teacher should not be moved for three years after his first appointment. A teacher does not get transferred till he or she is promoted or there are some unavoidable exigencies. National Foundation for Teachers Welfare should be established. The activities of the foundation will be enlarge the eligibility of teachers, widen the necessary organizational support provided to make the foundation an effective instrument of teachers welfare. For the teachers participation, the policy emphasized it is only through their active participation at all levels of management that the principal responsibility of educational transformation can be entrusted to the teachers. The main features include involvement of teachers in implementation of and P in laying down of rules, procedures and norms there for and in monitoring of policy implementation. Participation of teachers in the policy making and management forums such as CAB, State Advisory Board of Education, District Board of Education and at the village level also, village education committees etc. Provision of executive committee, syndicate and academic council level consultative bodies with teachers in fairly large numbers to discuss specific or general issues of improving the institutional system in higher education. This policy recognizes the importance of teachers association. The policy highlights that strong unified and responsible teacher associations are necessary for the protection of the dignity and rights of teacher as also for ensuring proper professional conduct of teachers. It would be advisable to encourage development of such association. Professional association of teachers will be encouraged to develop awareness of teachers towards their professional growth and development. It is necessary to stress the need for democratic functioning of all these organizations in the absence of which they tend to break into small groups and their credibility and capacity to serve the cause suffers. For the recruitment of teachers, the policy says that methods of recruitment of teachers will be reorganized to ensure objectivity, merit and conformity with spatial and functional requirements. The need to reduce ad hoc and temporary appointments and fill vacancy speedily will be kept in the view. Every effort will be made to make teaching an attractive profession to which young persons of talent and commitment may feel motivated to join the higher education. Apart from improvement in working and living conditions, the procedures of selection of teachers will also be reorganized. Persons who have given evidence of interest in teaching, love for students, of a spirit of adventure and creativity and commitment for social upliftment will be preferred in higher education. In addition to these qualities at the level of higher education, due attention would be given to the quality of intellect and capability to provide leadership to the youth. For selection of professors, readers, lecturers, persons from all part of the country would be made eligible and effort made 
to ensure that at least one fourth of the teachers at the university or college level in a state come from outside the state. The National Council of Teacher Education will be given the statutory status and necessary resources to play its role. In order to promote innovations and experimentation, good colleges and departments of education of universities will also be given the autonomous status. For the National Council of Teacher Education, the policy recognizes that accreditation and disaccreditation of institutions of teacher education that can be done by the NCT. Laying down of standards and norms for institutions of teacher education. The NCT will work in the areas of development of guidelines for curricula and methods of teacher education. Other functions like earning of credits for in service education, duration of various courses, place of correspondence education in teacher education, etcetera, and some other functions like preparation of learning materials orientation of senior teacher educators etc. may continue to be performed by NCRT, SCRTs in cooperation with National Council for Teacher Education NCT. The curriculum for teachers training need to be revised in the light of the new policy. In particular, there should be an emphasis on integration of education and culture, work experience, physical education and sports, the study of Indian culture and the problems of the unity and integration of the India that should be included. Educational technology, it influences not only the methodologies of the teaching learning process, but also the content and their design. These aspects should also be taken into account while framing the curriculum. So, proper and adequate emphasis should be given to the technological aspect. There is too much emphasis on textbook, on western ideas and teachers under training do not get exposed adequately to Indian philosophical and psychological concepts of education. Therefore, NCRT and UGC should undertake the task of preparing new learning materials which would include textbooks, reference books, anthologies, slides, films, videos, audios, etc. and which will reflect the Indian experience in the education. Gandhiji formulated the scheme of basic education seeking to harmonize intellectual and manual work. This was a great step forward in making education directly relevant to the life of the people. In the post independence period, a major concern of the government of India and of the states has been to give increasing attention to education as a factor vital to national progress and security. For the production of books, the policy emphasizes the quality of books should be improved by attracting the best writing talent through a liberal policy of incentives and remuneration. Immediate steps should be taken for the production of high quality textbooks for universities in higher education. The possibility of establishing autonomous book corporations on commercial lines should be examined and efforts should be made to have a few basic textbooks common throughout the country. 